suggest some basic habits of mind for teachers who are just meeting students with autism and welcoming them into their inclusive schools. The first is just being open, um, not assuming too much, not uh, getting nervous about having enough information about autism, just sort of having an open attitude, um, you know, and, and just sort of taking things as they come. I find a lot of teachers want a lot of information about autism before kids come into their classroom. And I think that's really important. I'm excited to see that. At the same time, I think it's just as important to get to know that child as an individual because there's an awful lot you can learn about autism, um, but you ultimately need to get to know that particular child. The second recommendation that I have for teachers, uh, in other words, a habit of mind that they can adopt, is to see themselves as a learner. I think probably teaching is one of those professions where we might be a little bit nervous about admitting that we don't know something. I think it's a profession that profits from teachers who are tentative, who are curious, who have ways of being able to say, I'm not sure about that, but let's find out together. I think in many cases, we'll find that students themselves bring us answers and families will bring us answers. And so it's probably better to have that sort of investigative spirit going into uh, uh, this new situation than feeling like we have to know everything or that we do know everything. And the third habit of mind I think is really helpful is to see this as an opportunity to really inspire your teaching. At the end of the experience, most teachers will say, you know, I have new ways of teaching all students. I tried it for Simon, but it really worked for the rest of my students. Or I wanted to make those adaptations for two of my students and now I'm using them for all of the lessons. So see students as a potential catalyst for inspiring changes in curriculum and instruction and even in assessment. See yourself as an important ally and advocate. Tips I would offer for, for example, the bus drivers um, in our school communities. Uh, they are so often uh, folks who are dealing with students and at some challenging times, transitions, and probably get the least amount of information. I just talked to a bus driver who said that she works with parents of, of kids um, who have some of these unique uh, learning needs to, to, in the beginning of the year, to say, is there an object that he should bring on the bus that will be helpful? Is there, um, should he have an iPod with him with certain kind of music? In the case of this uh, bus driver that I was talking to, she eventually gave her uh, student a map of the route that they would take. And so she combined both this ritual and sort of a, something to pass the time. So as he went through streets and he went through intersections, he could see how close they were getting to school. When students with autism become part of a school community, I've seen a lot of really positive outcomes. I've seen that students, even little kids um, on the spectrum, begin to learn about their needs. You see kids from an early age learning how to be in a world that's messy and complicated and doesn't always have you know the the correct um the supports in it that you count on inclusion is a process it's something that we have to do all the time we have to rethink it and inclusive schools are the places where people are going through that process continually and feeling comfortable with you know doing it different for one student than they did it last year